Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus and Mary present an introduction and welcome, filmed on the 11th of July 2014 in Monkeray, New South Wales, Australia. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> it's that wicked laugh that you don't like, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, firstly, I think we'd probably like to thank all the people that helped us make it happen. Shall we do that? So I'd probably like to go through some of their names for you, if you like. Um, Eloisa led a team of people who scoured the countryside to find a place that would accept Jesus and Mary <laughs> to come and do a presentation. And we can assure you there wasn't many at all. <laughs> many, we had a number of options, um, but uh, once they were told who was coming, most of them cancelled out. So... And so it was, it was quite a difficult task to actually do that. So once that was done, then we had to come up with all of the costings for you. So my, I went through and prepared a whole heap of spreadsheets to work out all the costings for everybody, all, all the accumulative costings and all those kind of things, and add it all together. So you have me to thank for all of your costings. <laughs> I don't know if you're happy about that. Um, and then um, what happened was that we asked Paige and Kerry, who volunteered, and, and it's been a big job that they've volunteered for, which was taking all of your bookings, accumulating all of those funds, and then paying the venue at the times that the venue wanted to be paid. And, uh, and so that meant that the last payment was made a few weeks ago, actually. And so we'd like to thank those two. Where are they? Uh, where are they And they did that as a gift uh, for, for you. And it's a fairly, if you ha had, had an idea of how much was, work was involved, it was a lot of work. So we'd like to thank them for that. And then we come to Mary, who prepared... Uh, she had to actually come up with some kind of a meal schedule for you. And so all of the meals that, we've, that are being prepared have all been tested by myself. <laughs> Prepared by Mary. <laughs> we, we could say we both tested them, probably. <laughs> and uh, so we hope you enjoy them. Um, we've, there will obviously be... A, it's a bit different doing a, a large... You know, for a large group of people and so forth, so hopefully things work out. But, uh, but all of the recipes for all of the meals on the assistant groups are now on our website. So there's a section called Resources on the website, and if you go in there, you'll find a section called Recipes. And in there, all of the recipes that we've got for these groups are there. And I love every one of these recipes. And uh, we also have some optional recipes that are even there that we're not having at the group. So you have a, you have a good fortnight or so of food if you go home and try the recipes. So that, that, that's what Mary's done. So that, that's been quite a lot of work because you, you had we had to measure out everything. So you know how you would normally... Well, the way we cook, myself and Mary, is we throw everything together and we base it on taste, right? But then we had to come up with how to do it per uh, amount of ingredients. And that's quite difficult, actually. It took us... Uh, we sometimes had to do it two or three times. So Mary had about four weeks of cooking like that every day <laughs> to get your meals sorted. So that uh, was a fair bit of work for her. Then, uh, <laughs> and then we, uh, myself, Cornelius, and Mary got together for the last eight weeks. We've been getting together twice, uh, usually once or twice a week, and preparing your program for you. So we've got a fairly well prepared program for you, and the reason why we've we've got a lot of information we want to share with you. And because of that, we're going to be quite tight with our timings and stuff because there's just so much information we would like to share with you. And we hope you enjoy the program itself. I feel that you will. It's going to be a pretty confronting program 
in terms of trying to help you get past resistance and past addictions in particular, into you know, past all of the uh, desires, addictions that you have and into some of the hurt feelings that you have. And so it's a, it's a fairly well-arranged uh, program. And to be honest with you, pretty much everything we present, you will have to do all of the things that we present to you over the next nine days if you ever want to have a relationship with God. So, so you're, going, you're going to need to do all the things we mention. Right? And so it's really great program for introducing somebody to what's going to be involved in in divine truth for them if they wish to embrace a relationship with God. And so it also will be a great resource, we're hoping, for future people who would like to do some work in their relationship with God and also on themselves. So that program we've developed and we are going to probably put all of the outlines for the program on the internet and eventually there will be transcripts on the internet and then, of course, we had all of the equipment to organise. So what uh, I've been doing, uh, we've been working about, I've been working about 12 hours a day for the last six weeks, getting all of your equipment sorted. And if you notice Igor up the back there, he's now surrounded by lots of technology. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't barely see him anymore. And his multifunctional device, he is a multifunctional device, <laughs> <laughs> operating a lot of other multifunctional devices. Um, fortunately, he has a soul and that helps. And uh, so we've got an hour video switching unit. So all of the recording is videoed live now. We, we're doing that. And the reason why we're doing that, uh, it costs quite a lot of money to set up, uh, over $40,000 to set up. And, and the reason why we're doing that is that uh, the biggest problem we were having before is that if we did any more than four hours of recording per week, the guys had to do 32 hours of editing per week. And uh, in terms of putting all the streams of audio and all the streams of video together, because we have three or four cameras and, and we also have a number of audio streams, and, and they then had to edit all of that and then produce it in order to get one video for you. Whereas now, with the switcher, we can reduce that time by five. So, so in other words, instead of a, instead of a four-hour session taking 32 hours, it takes around four to eight hours now to do, which means that we can do more material. So we have been. You'll notice that we've been producing a lot more material now. And, uh, and now there's a large volume of stuff on the internet uh, with, to do with frequently asked questions. We're up to 500 of those now, and we're hoping to get to up to 1,000 by the end of the year. And we've also been doing a lot of other sessions with myself and Mary and other people. So, so all of those sessions will eventually be with you as well. And the video switching unit is the key to all of that because it has reduced the amount of time. Before, if we did any more than four hours, the guys would be flat chat for the entire week. And I don't know if you've ever tried sitting down in front of the computer for 32 hours straight, but it's not very comfortable. And, and when we do eight hours, they'd have to do 64 hours. And if we do 12 hours, they'd have to do and it just keeps on going up, 96 hours and so forth. And it gets to the point that we can't do it. Like there's not enough time in their day or in their week or in their month to actually produce it. And so what was happening before is we'd have a whole backlog of material which we'd wait to complete and then have to do some more. Now what we're doing is we're doing an average of 12 hours a week on the average of material every week. And, uh, and they are able to get that out usually in about 24 hours which means that every week we get the material out as well, whereas before there was a large backlog. So it's been very, very helpful for us. And we're hoping during this assistance group, it means that within a few weeks after we finish here, that there'll be a whole large amount of people who will benefit from the group within a couple of weeks. So that, that'll be fantastic too. So that's required a new mixing setup and a new video setup and an extra computer and so forth and, and all the software needed for all of that to occur. And, of course, um, yours truly set all of those things up. So that took me a long time to do all of that. So, thank you. So there was much uh, cursing and swearing. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not how it is normally. Um, I just plug away at it and eventually it gets done. And so all the cabling set up had to be sorted out as well. We've, we've, had, to, we've had to repack every bag that we've got because of the new equipment. And now our van, which, travels, uh, which used to travel half full, now travels to the ceiling to the back full. <laughs> There's just heaps of gear. 
And most people are pretty amazed what we can get in the van, but fortunately we've got all the material in the van and brought it down with us. So that's also great, I feel, because it means now that we can produce a lot more material and get it out a lot more quickly. And that's really something that we're keen on doing over the coming months. So there's that, and then what else is there? I'm just trying to think. If, Fab, can you, if you just press that button there? That's right, yeah, we've already done all that. You've all been welcomed. Hopefully you've come to prepare the ground, love. Have you? Yes. Have you? Are you sure about that? No, you're not really. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so we've done the special thanks, who, who's, done, who's done everything. And, yeah, we've got to thank ourselves for preparing the material. <laughs> and one last thing I'd like to do is thank everybody who donated the funds for us to do that, uh, to do, put all these things together, because obviously it all comes from donated funds, right? And so that's been really, really good. So let's get started on the real issues we face. All of us have addiction-based belief systems. Do you know what I mean by that? It means that most of your current belief systems have nothing to do with what's right, has nothing to do with what's logical, has nothing to do with what is God's truth. It's just totally based on what you want out of life. In other words, it's based on your addictions. And so most of our belief systems are completely addictions. Right? Now, at the moment, most of us don't think that. Most of us think that our belief system is actually based on some logic or based on some truth or based on some experience in our life. But the problem with most of our experiences in our lives is that most of our experiences are based on errors that we've produced from a long time ago. We're taking... We're bearing the brunt, if you like, of the law of compensation, working upon our soul for the errors of our past. And then on top of that, we've got a whole heap of emotional hurt, which has a filter to everything around us. So it's like seeing, I've said that to you many times, it's like seeing things through different coloured glasses, and most of us see everything completely distorted. And some of our distortions are so great that, to be honest with you, you'd be better off, you know, basically being blind from a spiritual perspective <laughs> than you would having those distortions because most of those distortions cause a huge amount of problems in our lives so we've got this kind of uh, this kind of problems so we've been attracted to these belief systems over our life right? and most of the attractions to these belief systems are all based around one thing and one this one thing we're going to go through with you not tomorrow, but the next day, and that is it's based around your pain and avoiding it. It's all based around your pain and avoiding it. Now, our goal in these sessions is to help you connect with your pain. That's going to be one of our goals. Now, if you're resistive to connecting to your pain and we want you to or help, want to help you connect with your pain, what do you think is going to happen between us? Uh, can you see that might, there might not be too many pleasant interactions if, if we've got a goal of trying to help you to get into your pain and, and to work your way through the unloving behaviour that we engage and you've got a goal to avoid it, sooner or later there's going to be some conflict, is there not? So how are you going to handle this conflict? Because I know how I'm going to handle it. <laughs> How are you going to handle it? This is a very important question. Now, most of these belief systems that you have, you want them because they make you feel good about yourself. And most of you actually only feel good about yourself when you have your addictions met. All right? And what we want to do is challenge all of these things. We want to challenge them over the next few days. In fact, in fact the, the true core of the things that we'll be going through will be the next four days. Right? And the next four days are going to be a very, very important part of the entire week. Because the last few days are all about your self-reflections about the next four days. So what we're going to do is present you with four days of quite intensive material. So you think it's three hours every day of this material for four days straight. So there's 12 hours of material that you're going to be presented with. And then what we're going to do is have a day off, just so that you can recover, 
right? And then the next two days after that, we're going to discuss with you your reflections about the material that we, we presented to you over the next four days, the first four days. And we're trying to do all of this to try to assist you to see what is really involved in a relationship with God. What's really involved in terms of helping you get closer to God and closer to love in your day-to-day -day life. So that's going to be our focus. But the problem with these addictions, if we, just, um, if we have a look through them, we're addicted to feel good about ourselves. We're not honest about the damage that's inside of us, right? And we're also not honest about the damage we cause to others. And so what are we going to do about all these things? Now, there is nothing I can do for you. Do you, you know that, don't you? Right? There's nothing I can do for you. You're going to have to do it yourself. Now, there's a lot of people... I, we get emails fairly regularly where people say to us, you know, I've listened to you for five years and my life hasn't changed at all during those five years and it's all your fault. And I'm going, how's it my fault? I'm not the one who's not applying what I'm teaching. I'm applying it. My life's changing. If you look at me five years ago and look at me now, I'm, I'm different. And if you're not, it's because you're not applying it. Right? And we know many people, don't we, babe, that, are, that have not applied the material and they haven't made any changes in the five years we've known them with regard to love. Right? And rather than say to you, you know, you naughty, naughty people for doing that, <laughs> we want to say to you, these are the reasons why this is happening to you. So that you have an opportunity to have a look at the reasons why somebody stays stagnant in their life and doesn't grow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the primary cause of your stagnation is your addictions at this stage. And so we're having a program where tomorrow we're going to look at your will and desire. The next day we're going to look at your addictions. And the next day we're going to, or sorry, the next day we're going to look at your understanding yourself and how your, your whole self works, you know, your soul I'm talking about. How does your soul work? And then the next day after that we're talking about your addictions, how you can recognise them and challenge them. And then the next day after that we're going to look at these two core issues of repentance and forgiveness. So that, that's the main guts, if you like, of the material that we'll be presenting to you. And you can see in amongst that that the addictions day is going to be one fairly large slice of dealing with this material. Now, the question I ask you, though, is how do you respond when your addictions get triggered? How do you respond? Now, you know what I notice most of the time? We either get resistive, right, or we get angry. Is that not the case? Very rarely do people actually look at their addictions properly and actually examine them with any real clarity. Now, we have to develop some way or method of, of, your, of handling your resistance, because you can be guaranteed you're going to have some, right? And we also have to be, have some way of dealing with your anger, right? And I, you don't have to be guaranteed that you have anger, but a lot of you have had anger, so you know, if you think about it, there's a bit of a likelihood you might have anger. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do about those things? What would you do if you were me? If you were providing something for free to a group of people and they became resistive in what you were with what you were providing, what would you do? Do you have any ideas? Yeah, Louisa, you want to have a go? And let's, let's do the microphone. So the Is it what I'd do now? Because it's probably <laughs> less loving than what well, you do. Well, let's look at what you'd do now. <laughs> I probably would... Uh, want to send them away pretty quickly you'd want us like to what well, i'd want to okay hold on part of me would want to like go you're being resistive or you're being especially the angry bit you're being angry you need to leave yep um but i also know that that's not always very helpful it's not what you do in your life though if you're honest with yourself everyone that gets angry with you gets lots of opportunities to get angry with you <laughs> that's true Okay, so <laughs> I give them endless opportunities to abuse me as much as they want. You do, yeah. Yeah. You do, yeah. Do you think I'm going to do that? No. No. I don't. No. How many opportunities do you think you're going to get if you start abusing me? Like none. Yeah, yeah none. You're going to get none. Do you, do you understand that? 
you're going to get none. You know what that means? I'm going, I'm going to say, you need to leave and you're not coming back. That's it. Because I don't want to have to stand here and deal with anybody's anger towards myself. I'm trying to give you a gift here and if you can't recognise it's a gift, then as far as I'm concerned, don't be here. You go, I know, it doesn't worry me how much you've paid the venue to stay here. You can stay here still, you're just not coming here. You're not coming to where I'm going to give a gift. Now this applies to Mary, to Cornelius. It applies to if, you, if I see you angry with any of the people that are helping. If I see you angry with the staff. If I see you angry with the venue. I'm going to treat you exactly the same. Is that a deal? So you're going to have to be, take a lot of care before you open your mouth, right? Can you see that? Yeah. Because... And I'm not saying that you can't express yourself or how you feel. What I'm saying is, if you start getting angry, you know the emotion, you know what it feels like, the angry emotion that's coming out of you, you know that, that angry emotion and people can feel it around you. That, and you can have a smile on your face doing it and I'll still kick you out. Do you understand? That's what I'll do. And because I, I, I don't want to put up with your anger, because I don't think I deserve it. I never created it. You know, your mummy, your daddy, your environment. The, all those people created it. God never created it. I never created it. I've, I've, I've barely been in your life for any period of time. And I came into your life when you were an adult. So how could I have created it? Impossible for me to create your anger. I can trigger it, perhaps, by what I say. And who knows, maybe a few things I say might trigger some of your anger, right? But... But it's not my responsibility that you then choose anger rather than being reflective. Right? And for some of you, you're going to find that it's going to happen a lot quickly, more quickly than you thought. Some of you are going to find yourself out the door when you thought you'd be fine. And others of you who are so afraid that you're not going to be fine will be fine. <laughs> right? And that's because some of you are, are so arrogant that you believe you know everything already. And you're going to have a lot more trouble than the people who don't believe that. Right? So we're going to find all of these come up, things come up because we've got subjects that are serious subjects to discuss with you. And we want to help you get through this level of resistance that's there. So, so anger is one level of resistance, right? So, so Eloise would handle it by just letting you be angry with her for as many times as you want to be. Well, that's not the way I'm going to handle it. I used to handle it that way. But as I said to Mary, I'm tired of that now. I don't deserve it. And, and all I'm trying to do is help people grow in love. And, and that means that I've also got to love myself and I'm not going to put up with it. Right? And I'm encouraging Corny and I'm encouraging Mary to do the same. And I'm encouraging all of our assistants to do the same. And if I observe any rage projected at anyone for any reason, whether you think it's rageful or not, I'm going to make the decision because I'm allowed to. You know why I'm allowed to? Because I'm here having to put up with it. <laughs> and I'm allowed to. And I'm giving this gift for free. It's not like you've paid me for my time or anything. We haven't entered a bartering system or a contract. Right? So that's one issue I'd like to discuss. The second issue I'd like to raise with you is this issue of resistance. What are you going to do? What would you do if somebody comes up to you and says, I'd really like to know, and they say, I'd really like to know about my relationship and what I can do to improve my relationship. And you, and you go, OK, OK, this is what I feel. Bing, 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 you know, you say a few comments. And they say, no, it's none of that, it's none of that, it's none of that. No, it's not that. Right? And then next day they come up to you and say, I'd really like to know what I'd like to do to fix my relationship. And what would you start to feel then? What would you feel? Oh, uh, let's use the mic. Mics. I, I think I'd be annoyed. You'd be annoyed? I'd be annoyed. It doesn't worry me much. Like, you can be resistive as you want to be. But what, what do you feel inside of yourself, right, when somebody has asked you for something, you give them what they've asked, and then they basically say, no, that's not what I wanted. And then, and then they ask again. And we ask again, what would you feel under those circumstances? Okay? If you have the mic. That I'm just wasting my time. Yes, and yeah. that would be very true. Yeah. Would it not? Yeah. And you know what I think? 
I, I'm not into wasting my time. I've got, I got lots of precious things to do with my time and I don't want to spend my time wasting my time dealing with people who are resistive all the time. That makes sense, doesn't it? And if I'm giving my time away to people, then I don't want to have to deal with any resistive. resistance. You know what? What's the opposite to resistance? What, what, in terms of a feeling, what would you say was the opposite, right? Uh, compliance. Um, I'd go even further than that. Compliance to me is very uh, insipid emotion. Uh, let's go further. What's the opposite to resistance? If we go back, uh, yep, straight back. It'd have to be humility, wouldn't it? True, but uh, let's, do, let's define humility. What is it? Willingness to feel all the emotions that are inside myself that... Yes, is, is it just willingness? Let's, let's, let's think about it. It's got to be a strong desire as ah, well. Ah, yes, there. strong desire. Now, if you have a strong desire for truth, do you resist every bit of truth that comes to you? No, you don't, do you? What do you do instead? What do you do? If we come down here with the mic, just be careful of the, um, uh, the videos, yeah. Um, there's got to be a receptivity in me to allow it in to feel it? Well, wouldn't a strong desire already create a receptivity? See, this is something that Mary is going to help you with tomorrow um, in terms of what, what, how does your heart feel when you are really in desire for truth? It, when you're really in desire, you just soak it up, doesn't it? It's like a sponge, you know. You're, you're, not, you're not preventing it and you're not insipid, insipidly going, oh, okay, if I've got to do it, I've got to do it. No. You don't do that there's either, a, do you? There's a longing, yeah. a longing for, yeah. for the, you know, what's You could say come. it's a passionate longing or desire yeah. for information, yeah. right? Now, what I would love to see in all of you is this passionate desire for information. But half of you are terrified. So that's not going to help you to have a passionate desire for more information. Right? And particularly when it comes to information about yourself. This is, the, this is the area where most people fail on the divine love path for many, many years. When I say fail for many years, you know, they could have progressed years ago, but they fail because they don't want personal truth. They don't want it. They have no real desire for it. There's not a passion in them for it. The reason why we're giving the opportunity, as Mary brought up, the opportunity to do these personal truth sessions is so that you can express your desire for personal truth in a certain aspect of your life. Right? They're going to be very direct sessions and very short, sharp and shiny. And, you, you, and particularly short and sharp. <laughs> you might not think they're very shiny. <laughs> Right. And, and we've got to do it that way because we, we want to help you understand where the, the whole concept of God's truth is breaking down inside of you. That's what we want to do. And if you have a passionate desire inside of you, you will not be resistive. You won't want to argue and fight at every point that we make to you. You won't. You'll go away and you'll be reflective. Even if you disagree with a point we make to you, you'll go away and be dis Reflective about the information. Does that make sense, Laura? Fill the mic through. Not across the front, thanks. Uh, no, can we pay the mic back, thanks? What I'd like to do with the mic, if, if we can just remember this, if one side mic handles one side, one side handles the other, that way you won't cross the videos in the middle, <laughs> which will be great for the people who are listening, and it also means that you're not going to accidentally get in the way of all the shots that are happening, because they've been carefully prepared so that we don't miss out the action. Thanks, Laura. Um, I'm just wondering if you could clarify, like, um, if, I, if I felt like I had that longing for truth, that openness, that receptivity, that burning, yearning desire, yeah. wouldn't, I, wouldn't God, wouldn't I already then just be feeling the emotion that, I don't even, uh, let me rephrase it, you were saying that if I wasn't resistive, I would be open to the truth that you would give me. But if I had that quality in me, wouldn't God be able to just, like... Totally. Glory of a tra like, I'd already be receiving truth. Totally. Yeah, you so would. The, so the only reason... So why what does that tell you? Well, the only reason I want it from you is because I'm, like, there's in personal truth is because I'm, I'm resistive to w what's being shown to me in any given moment. Correct. So you're already not humble. No. So, so basically everyone here is already not humble. All right. 
So it's the truth, isn't it? Because I feel like if you were giving me personal truth, there would be that little... Like, I don't think I'd get angry, but there'd be that little, like... It just that little wall of resistance, like... Well, yes, see, see, uh, see, anger is one thing. See, to me, anger is the purposeful choice to damage another person so that you can avoid something. So I, I see anger as very, very different to resistance. Okay. See, what you think is not resistant at all, I think is resistance. Right? And what I'm going to do with resistance is this. I, I don't know what you would do, but honestly, I get a bit tired of talking to people who are in resistance all the time. Can't you see? You, you, you know, imagine every conversation you ever have is somebody's in resistance with what you say. After a while, you go, "Well, maybe I shouldn't be opening my mouth." <laughs> you know, or you go, "Well, I, I'm not in resistance. So I might as well go and work on myself some more." Like I don't feel that res same resistance. So, so this is what I'm going to suggest, suggest with resistance. I'll go. That's one resistance, <laughs> and then that's two resistance. And that's three resistance. Now, what should I do? Three. Should I go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen? And for many of you, have gone 150, 160, <laughs> 170, 180, 190. And for some of you, I've spent you know hours and hours with. Sometimes it's more than that, right? I don't want to do that anymore. That's right? not loving. No, it's not loving to me for a start. But but also, it's telling me that you don't really want it yet. And I just feel that if you don't really want it yet, I, I don't want to make you have it. Uh, like, I'm not a kind of person who's going to be like a cult master, you know, drumming it into your throat, down your throat. It's like, you either want it or you don't want it, and that's fine by me either way. So, so what I'm going to do is one resistance, two resistance, three resistance. From that moment on, I don't want you to talk to me. Now, I'm not saying that nastily. I'm just saying I don't want you to question me again during the group. I don't want to answer another one of your questions. I don't want to have an interaction with you in the food area room or anything else because you're in resistance. I want you to know you're in resistance. Now, you know what God does with your resistance? What does God do with your resistance? You know already. Any ideas? You don't know. Surely you know. You don't. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, he's, he's quite happy for you to do it, but yeah. he doesn't have any interaction with you during that period of time. Exactly. So you don't receive any love from God while you're in resistance, do you? You no. don't receive any attention from God while you're in resistance. He, God's hopeful. God's hopeful that you're going to get out of your own resistance and you get into some desire. Because remember, desire, longing, is what opens your heart. See, see, if I'm dealing with a group of people who have no desire, no longing, then their hearts are not open. What, what's the point of that? Like, my heart's open, I'd rather go and do some things for myself under those circumstances. Right? So, so what I would like to encourage you to do is when you see me go... <laughs> you go, uh oh <laughs> Resistance number one. <laughs> uh oh, there's only one more to go, and I'm out of here. Not, not out of here, because what we're going to do for anybody who we've had three resistances with is we say, You're welcome to come and sit in the audience. We don't want to engage you anymore. Listen. You're going to have to listen if you want to stay. All right? Now, that's different to your anger. If you're in anger, we're sending you home. All right? And you can stay here because you've paid for the venue like, and you've paid for your meal so you can have a meal, but you're just not coming in here. Does that make sense? If you're angry. Yep. All right. Now, do you think that's fair enough? Well, it's too bad. <laughs> Whether you thought it was fair enough or not, that's how it's going, how it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad if you didn't feel that's fair. We feel that we want to make this uh, space, if you like, a space where you can learn what's causing your relationship to God, with God to stagnate. And we want to make it a space where we help you 
identify by helping you through some processes, if you like. Not, we're not going to make you go through the processes. We're just going to introduce you to some concepts which will help you, if you're sincere, to break down the reasons why you're stagnant and resistive to God's love. And we're very, very hopeful that the, the, the presentations that we give will do that for you. But we can't guarantee it will, because that will all depend upon the use of your will. And there's nothing we can do to make you change your will. We can help you come to understand some truth, perhaps, but that's not going to help you change your will in the end. You're the person who's going to have to change your will. Nobody else can do that for you. God doesn't do that for you. And no person who's insane would try to do it for you either. Because God knows that each of you have a will that you need to develop. And this is something that Mary will discuss with you tomorrow quite a lot, how to strengthen that will, the development of that will. So how does that sound to you so far about your resistance? Yeah. Now, I'm going to bring up some things that are going to absolutely offend some of you. Honestly, they are. You're going to take offence. And some, for some of you, it's going to be the very last time we ever see each other. Because you're going to get so upset. Like everybody who gets upset, you're going to get spirit influenced. And once you, that happens, you're going to hate my guts. Just like there's many other people who have. And as a result, you, you'll go your merry way and perhaps even attempt to attack me for the rest of your life like some do. And I don't care. I don't care about that. And the reason why I don't care about that because I know that my motivation for being here is pure. I know that what I'm saying to you, I, won't, I wouldn't say it to you unless I was sure. Right? I know those things. So, so if you can't have some trust in that, well, that's fine by me. That's fine by me. But, but I am going to address things this way. Now, for some of you, we have not met you many times before, any times before, right? And, and for those of you who we haven't met before, welcome. <laughs> I don't know how long you stay, but welcome. <laughs> no. Obviously, a person that is new to understanding the truth or the path that we're teaching, um, we obviously will have a lot more lenience with than a person who's had a long-standing relationship with it. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because many of you who've had a long-standing relationship with it have been around it for many, many years. And because you've been around it for many years, and we feel we, we need to say some straight things with you if you want that opportunity. Now, these truth, personal truth sessions are an opportunity for you. You can see them as such. Or you could see them as such as like, I'm going to avoid those sessions. <laughs> you know, you could see them as the worst possible thing, in the worst possible nightmare. Now, my suggestion is if you see them as your worst possible nightmare already, then you're probably not that open to personal truth. That would make sense, wouldn't it? And the reason why we're recording them is because we know for certain that lots of people in the world would benefit from them. So it's not only going to be you that benefits from them, but many other people in the world will benefit from such recordings. Now, we're, we're not uh, concerned about people who don't like us after this event. We're not concerned about those things. What we're concerned about is that we present the truth to you. And we do so in a sincere, honest and open manner. That's what we're concerned about. You know, Cornelius and myself and Mary have all given that a lot of thought in our preparation. We want this to be the best possible experience for you to be able to work through these particular issues. Right? And so we feel that a lot of the success of this event for you will be dependent upon you and your attitude to it. Yeah. We're happy to address any issues, but we're not happy to, to put up with any crap. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. And we're happy to give you as much of our time as we possibly can because we know that it is difficult sometimes working your way through from a place of addiction and resistance into a place of openness and willingness, in particularly in your relationship with God. Right. Okay. So how does that sound to you? Are you okay with that? Or 
Do I have to send you all home now and we start again next week? <laughs> You're okay with that? Okay. Okay. Now, um, Margaret Cohen. Yes, you, isn't it, Margaret? Um, if what you did today was with the girls, uh, with the booking girls, was what you, if you had done that tomorrow, you would already be gone. Does that make sense? I want you to be very, very reflective about what you did today because what you did was very unloving to a number of people, not just Paige, who you were primarily concerned about. And we have observed, unbeknownst to yourself, myself and Mary have a complete link into every interaction that happened between Paige and Kerry and every single person who went through the booking process. And the ones that we knew or felt were out of, out of harmony, we addressed and dealt with. And there's some others of you here who know that we have done that. And the reason why we didn't deal with yours is because we knew that they had dealt with you in the right manner. So your feelings that they haven't is completely about your misinterpretation of what love would do and what self-responsibility would do. So I'd like you to reflect upon that. Is that fair enough? And, and my suggestion is, before you open your mouth again, this is your first warning with regard... And, and by the way, normally I wouldn't give any warnings. So you're very lucky that you're getting one. Um, because normally if a person had treated Paige and Kerry or any other person who had assisted us to make this group happen like you did today, they wouldn't be here tonight. So if you can be reflective about that, that would be fantastic. Okay? Okay, now I'm going to be direct with you guys like that. All right? And, uh, and this is an opportunity for you to be able to reflect upon those things. Now, Corny and Mary are both practising to be as direct like that with you as well. <laughs> They're not guaranteeing that they'll be the same, but they, they are wanting to be the same way so that we... Basically what we're trying to do is not feed any of your addictions. All right? And there's a reason for that, and that is because your addictions are one of the reasons why you are not developing in your relationship with God. All right? So we, we need to help you confront them. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this. And there's a lot of material we're going to present to you about helping you do that, but there's also interactions that we will have where we observe unloving behaviour, just like we did with, with yourself, Margaret, and, and we will be frank with you about those particular situations. Does that make sense? And we're going to be like that for the rest of the week. Now, if you allow yourself to actually be reflective, you'll find it will benefit you immensely. If you allow yourself to get uh, very angry and resistive, you'll find that some very dark spirits will come in because there are a lot around uh, any presentation that myself and Mary do. And, and you will become very angry and, and you will have to be sent home under those circumstances. So it's going to depend a lot upon yourself as to what happens here. Right. I, I am going to be an immovable object. <laughs> right. Because that's how I'd like to be. That's, I, I know God to be the same and that's how I would like to be. And particularly when it comes to love, truth and what's humble to do. Yeah. And as I said, Corny and Mary are both wanting to do the same. So that's what we're hoping to achieve. So, how does that all sound to you? You're okay with that? Felix? Yep. Max? If you just wait for the mic. It's coming your way from the front. Uh, of course, I mean, because I have, I have a lot of... Um, I'm been dealing with a, like a lot of anger. Yep. Um, I mean, if I feel myself get anger, then I, I mean, usually I just go away, have a bash, and have a feel about it, and then come yep. back. Like, I mean, if I was in a personal truth session with you, and I could, um, I mean, if if I was humble to my own res resistance and my own um, rage, uh, you know, because I know, for example, I don't, I don't. Let me answer your yeah. question because I can answer your question. Yeah. yeah. And Thanks. For, I'm going to encourage you to feel your anger. Yeah. I'm not going to encourage you to feel your anger towards a person. Okay, I see. There's a big difference between yeah, those yeah, two things. Yeah. Do you understand? The person yeah. who's really taking responsibility for their anger will actually feel their anger in a private setting. Yeah. yeah and that's what I'll encourage you to do. So I'm happy for anybody in a personal truth says, I'm angry now, out at the door, and they don't project it at me, and I say, that's fantastic. 
So, so I could just come back in like a. You can few come back, minutes, yeah, and yeah. we can continue the tree session okay. next day if you want. Oh, okay. You know, does good. that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you get angry with me and you start projecting it at yeah. me, yeah. now we've got a problem. Yeah. Okay. Because that's an assault, in my yeah. opinion. Okay. Yeah. Does that make Thank, sense? Thanks, Ed. Yeah. yeah. Good. So, so we want to be quite plain with you that I'm not saying to you you're not allowed to feel anger. What I'm saying to you is that your anger is a choice to get your addiction met, and your anger is a response to that addiction. And you need to start seeing it as such. You need to start seeing your anger as a choice. And many of you don't see it as a choice. Many of you think, I've got justification for being angry. And you haven't. You have, there's no justification for being angry. Even if somebody's hurting you, there's no justification for being angry from God's perspective. Did you know that? And I'm not going to be hurting you. So there's no justification for you to get angry with me. But you might feel some anger. So if you feel some anger, go and feel it. Let, you, let yourself get away from the situation and I don't care if you're sitting here in front with me and you go, oh, I'm angry, and oh, off. Uh, as long as you leave your microphone behind, that would be great. <laughs> well, otherwise, the next person, you know, we, we have no microphone. <laughs> right? And, and I don't want to damage a $1,000 microphone in the process. That would be great. <laughs> but, but I'm perfectly happy for you to just leave and go. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. But, and the same applies in your interaction with other people here. Like, perfect happy for you to see, go away, feel about what it's all about. But understand, every time you're angry, it's not about anything other than one addiction not getting met. Right? And the key thing for you is going to be finding that addiction. What is that addiction that's not getting met? You know? And then we can help you do that. But we're not, going to, we're not going to browbeat you into doing that, pressure you into doing that, it's going to have to be driven by, by On. your desire, your will, yeah. Your desire, your passionate desire. That's what it's going to have to be driven by. So that's what we'd like to do now. As you can feel, it's starting to get a bit nippy. Um, and it's going to be a bit like this at nights, I think. So what we're going to be doing most nights is that we have no program, no sitting down program. This is the only sit down program we'll be having in the evening. And all the rest of the programs are happening from the, in the warmest time of the day from 11 o'clock till 3.30. Um, so that's our main time, as Mary's already gone through with you. And so what we'd like to encourage you to do is be prepared for that period of time. In some of the, one of the evenings, we're thinking we might do a karaoke session, if you're up to that. And since Fab's around and I, I, like, I like having to sing with him, we might actually do a concert on Saturday. If that's all right with you guys? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. May ask, may ask Kate to join, may ask Corny to join. You never know who will be able to rope into the whole thing. And so the last day, we'll probably do that in the evening. And the last day, by the way, I just want to mention, it's going to be there to try to motivate you in your relationship with God. Right? Because, and our whole of our last day is focused on your relationship with God. It's focused on three primary things. It's faith, your will, and your desire for a relationship with God. And if you think about it, tomorrow, if you, you'll see there's a pattern that develops over the course of the week. We've developed a program, as I've said, that has many, many patterns in it. And we're hoping that at some point in time in the future you might realise those patterns and start to contemplate what we were trying to get at with you. But we're hoping in particular that the last day will leave you with a desire to go into your personal life and do something every day for your relationship with God. That's what we're hoping. And that is what we're hoping you will do. You, you know and I know that having a week away from the world, right, in a situation that's a fairly controlled environment where everyone around you has at least some semblance of wanting or having some semblance of desire to have a relationship with God or to improve in love is going to be a much easier proposition than going out into the world and then every, every, every single day trying to develop this relationship. But that's what every one of us needs to do. We need to learn, all of us personally need to learn how to develop a relationship with God every single day in a normal existence. That's what we need to learn. And many of us get distracted, you know, don't we? Yes. 
gets distractions. And before you know it, months gone past and you've not done prayer and you've not done, developed yourself. And, you know, you get distracted in your relationship with spirits and you've got codependence with each other. And before you know it, you're having codependent relationships everywhere. And, you know, this is the kind of thing you're going to need to confront in your day to day life if you really want to benefit from what we're going to teach you over the coming week. So, what we'd like to do in closing tonight is encourage you to contemplate what you are going to do in your personal life to apply what is taught to you over the coming week. Can we leave that with you as the question of the week? What are you going to do in your personal life to, to actually address these issues every day? That's the question we would like to leave with you. Because we feel that unless you're going to do that, like it's a waste of your money and your time to be here. Yep. But we also feel quite com confident that many of you do have a desire that you where you want to grow. And if you can engage many of these principles which have been holding you back from growth over the coming week, you will make major changes in your life after you've been here. You will make major changes in even your way you live your life after you've been here. And that's what we'd like to encourage you to contemplate through the week. How you are going to apply this material daily in your life after you've finished here. Because all we're going to be able to do is just present information to you. And hopefully help you see where some of the addictions are and where some of the problems are. After that, it's going to be up to you as to what you will do. That's good, guys. Thank you. So you're comfortable with that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Well, we're very happy to have you here. And uh, we, we've been looking forward to it. Uh, I know Mary's been looking forward to it probably the most longest. <laughs> and uh, I've been so busy that I haven't had time to think about it too much. <laughs> but uh, we're looking forward to spending this time with you. It, it's... Um, we don't know if we'll ever do these again, by the way. In fact, at this point in time, we're contemplating that we won't do them again, ever again. And so this is sort of like a one-off opportunity. Um, because uh, you get to a point where there's too many people interested that you can't help them by having groups like this. You, you know, you need to do things that have more of an effect on a larger group of people. And so um, we don't see these things as being a regular part of what we do. We see these as special occasions where we get the chance to get to know many of you, if we haven't already known you, that you get to live a bit of life where it's a sort of kind of life that myself and Mary live to a large extent. Like We spend a good six or seven hours a day contemplating about what we're going to do with our life. Right? And we take a lot of action in our life towards, those, those, towards the things that we want to do. We don't plan to do things that have, uh, that have no long-term benefit in our life. We don't spend money even, but in a way, unless it has a long-term benefit in our life. There's, a, there's even the day-to-day -day things that you could observe. You know, you'll observe what we eat and what we drink and all those kind of things. And you could start copying that if you want. Like Mary said, we, we drink four to six litres of water a day. Um, you could do that while you're here. We drink two litres before we even have anything to eat. And usually, myself and Mary, all we have is fruit to eat. Right? So in the morning, I mean, after, after we've drank water, you could try that. There's an opportunity for you to try that. Right? There's an opportunity for you to try a lot of things. Yeah. And there's an opportunity for you to try it in an environment where you're not going to get hammered by everyone around you for doing it. <laughs> and that's great too, isn't it? To be in an environment where nobody's going to say, oh, what a stupid idiot, they only eat fruit. Like, you know, it's going to be an environment where people are, can be supportive, right? And that can help when you go out into the world to live that life. So, Laura, you want to ask a question? I was just going to say if there would be a possibility of an opportunity, whether it be in the three hours or the personal truth, to ask um, personal questions for you. For for us to ask you guys personal questions. The personal truth sessions after that. 
for us. So you need to book one in. Remember, Mary said the notice. The, the, I know. The, I mean, to ask you questions about your life. No. 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 Okay. No. Um, no. We might. Uh, what we might do, depending on how we feel, is that uh, uh, after after dinners, you, you know, the dinners are finishing about five. Like it takes about an hour for us to all have dinner, really. In the long run, we, you're all slow eaters and we talk a lot, you know, and that's the way it goes, right? I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, so it takes about an hour. So from four to five, we'll probably be having dinner, right? And I think we plan, I think it's seven o'clock, isn't it? The, uh, the Yeah, I didn't mention that. The seven o'clock each night, there'll be supper, supper served in that pool room, just where it was this evening. And that's just a very light snack with a cup of tea. Yeah, so it's like, you know, I had an Anzac picky tonight and a cup of tea or something like that. You know, that's the supper. And by the way, some of the suppers are really quite good. Um, Mary and I don't eat any carbohydrates at all, uh, and particularly sweet carbohydrates. So, like, so we don't have cakes and bickies and all those kind of things. Um, so we've made some allowances for you. Right. Not every night, though. <laughs> Not every night. What we've done is we're trying to wean you away from sugary carbohydrates. Right? That's one of our goals this week, is to help you get away from the sugary carbohydrates which destroy your body and actually destroy your cognitive function. And they also do a lot of other damage to your body. And, uh, and besides the fact that they feed one of your addictions, and that is your addiction to avoid your fear. And we're not into... Uh, feeding that addiction, we want to confront that one, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we're going to be encouraging you a bit. So we'll give you a little bit of carbohydrate, <laughs> and then we'll give you some hummus and some carrot sticks or whatever. <laughs> that was just so as to avoid a riot, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the sweet stuff. We had to like go easy. <laughs> yeah, we, we know we know that for some of you it is so bad that you possibly would riot. And we thought we thought seventy people rioting not that a good idea, particularly when it's in someone else's venue. So um, so we decided to make some allowances, and so that's one of the allowances that we that we made. So so when you do get to that sweet carbohydrate day, you know which happens once every two days, you'll find. Um, my suggestion is to take advantage of it. Put it in your handbag. <laughs> It'll be your last opportunity. No, no. <laughs> no, we've, we've also, with all of that, tried to make it such a way that, um, that it's not very much, you know. So, so you'll find most of the meals have very little carbohydrate in them. And if they do, it's mostly rice, isn't it? And... Potato and like starchy yeah, I veggies. I think that's it. We've got rice. Yeah. And a few potatoes. Yeah. We had some tonight. There's a lot more a nuts bit. and greens yep. in most of the meals. And uh, you get a chance to do some stuff, and we've developed some of the um, menus together. You even get one that I've developed. How about that? Like, yeah. But um, what, what we will do with all of that is we're try what we're trying to do is help you see how, much, how dependent your addictions are on food. Many of you have very, very large addictions with food and, and it is causing you to, to avoid a lot of personal pain and we'd like to help you through that. So that's one of the reasons why we've done that. Is that not right? Yeah, that's absolutely we right. Did that's we did consider going really hard on you, like, <laughs> like a boot camp type of thing, you know. And then we thought, ah, oh, that's a bit unloving. You know, that's, no. But I, I imagine for some of you it's a bit of a challenge just to have two meals a day. So yeah. usually that's what we do, or that's what we do routinely. Yeah. And so we thought it's good to give you a chance to give your digestion a little rest in the evenings till the morning. Um, yeah, normally we wouldn't have a supper, like myself and Mary. Normally we'd have water in the morning till we have some fruit and we have a little bit of a, a, a smoothie with the fruit and that's it. And then we have an afternoon meal and that's it. We don't have any sweet things and things like that. In fact, I, I react badly now to sweet things. I just I can't eat them at all anyway. So that's how we would normally eat. We'd encourage you to drink a lot of water, a lot of water. We've ordered purposefully three litres of water for you every day. If you have a look out there, there's like bottles and bottles and bottles and bottles and bottles of water. That's for you. That's for you. And we'd like to encourage you to drink it. 
right? If you can have a goal, two before breakfast, two litres before breakfast, many of you will feel sick with it as a result of two before breakfast. And that's because of what water will do to bring up some of your fears. Right? So, so my suggestion is for you to try that. And then you've probably come along to the breakfast and go, I don't know, I want drinking. But uh, breakfast time, I think, on the every day is pretty much the same. It's, uh, it's, it's oat porridge one day and chia porridge the next, isn't it, with fruit? Yep, that's what it is. Yeah. And there should be some fresh fruit at every brekkie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And you might not see us at brekkie. Uh, Matthew? Where's the mic? Uh, yep. <laughs> I'm just... Yep, you're right. Eagle. You're right, Matt. Yeah. It's just because it was that. on the floor, Eagle yeah. had to turn it off. Um, just with the breakfast, you said it starts at 9. 30. Not 9, 30. Sorry, my bad. Yep. Um, rock up like right then or just... Is, no, is it like I should tonight's mention... Tonight's tip? Sorry about that. Yeah, no. Meal times, if you can be prompt, there's a lot of us to get through. And if you show up at quarter past 10, I don't count on getting a meal, you know. Don't count on... Fair enough. You know, I think that we need to respect the kitchen staff. Yeah. If you can get there, you know, it's close to 9.30. Yeah. It's better possible. that we're waiting than we're making them wait. And it's also better that we're waiting and it's hot than, you know, them waiting and it turned cold. So for the evening know. meal, 4pm. We should have half an hour break after we finish the last personal truth session. Mm. So if you need to go back to your room, whatever. Um, and then 4pm, you'll all want to be in there because it's so nice and warm. <laughs> it is nice and well. In, at 4 pm, and hopefully we can wrap up then by 5. Yeah. yeah. Senator, yeah, keep going. Uh, one other question Are there any laundry facilities here at all? There are. There are. There's laundry facilities between the two lots of cabins. So if you head that way down the street, you'll see on the right, there's an, on the left, other right, there's an amenities block, and around the back of it is a coin operated laundry. It's two fifty per load, and you have to purchase tokens from the, the, front, the office. front office. And there's a couple of dryers as well, and it's a dollar for half an hour. So, yep. yeah, just if you if you need it, I should have mentioned that as well. Yep. There's also a kiosk on site. Yep. So if you do think you're about to riot, I'm sure you'll be able to access them. I think they stocked vegan goods for us, especially. Um, I've also made some, uh, we've you know, provided some vegan dishes like the Anzacs and, and some muffins and things like that. You could have a cup of there with a muffin if you yeah, want. Yeah, they're fully stocked in, I don't know, almond or soy or some kind of milk that's not um, dairy. So if you're hankering for something. Yeah. And we're not going to be, you know, addiction police. <laughs> and also you could even have a burger there. Yep. Veggie burger or something. Yeah, yeah, they contacted me during the week, especially to source vegan bread for you um, and different types of vegan chocolate. So if you so find if you're you, really, really hungry. Yeah. Or if you miss a meal because you you're processing, <laughs> yeah, you might be in your room, you know. And I wanted to say that it's not compulsory to come to every session. Obviously, we think it's ideal if you do because we're building upon themes. But if you're processing, you need to do what you need to do and same goes if you're processing at a meal time. But just don't expect to be catered for, obviously, if you're not there at the meal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's also a public phone. There's very dodgy mobile phone reception here. So it depends on which network you're with. I think you get um, some coverage. But there's a public phone just near the kiosk if you need it. Yeah. So has that covered pretty much everything that we need to worry uh, Alan, about? Alan, you wanted to ask something. Yeah. Um, you talked before about, you know, making noise when you're processing and stuff like that. And this, this, this affects me at home too. Like sometimes I wake up really afraid in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and I don't want to wake Neil because, you know, I mean, what do we do in that situation? Yeah. And, you know, what, what is a... Um, See, if I was home by myself, if I was, you know... If, relationship yeah what i would do is i'd have a bedroom that i could go to yes. and just and just do my processing it's that's not going to be able to obviously no. ha be handled yes. you guys in a cabin or you're in a or in, in a room I'm, yeah not only, i'm not just talking about myself but if you've got people next door yeah I mean, what are the limits of when we start doing that sort of thing when we you, you know, need to have night? a yeah, you need to have a lot of love and care yeah. and compassion for everyone around you yeah. i feel mm. and and that's going to mean you, you might need to just put your head under the pillow and do it. Do you know what I mean? And things yeah. like that. Um, 
my feelings are this week is not going to be about emotional processing for you. It's going to be about learning how to do what you need to do at home. Do you, do you follow me? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the main focus. Now, things may come up during the week. The key is to be loving in the way that you handle those things. Now, there are some uh, rooms free, aren't there, in the... Bunkhouse. Bunkhouse. Yes. There are you know, wide open spaces where you can just go if you wanted to. Um, but it's going to mean that you are going to need to not hook into other people, you know, wanting other people to know that you're processing, mm. basically, and, and to look after the, the, and be considerate of other people. I do think it's amazing when, what you attract. When you're in a soft place and you just need to have a good cry, usually you, you end up being in a place where you're not really affecting many other people. Yeah. It's the, the soul's will to actually involve other people in processing, <laughs> that addictive desire is what I was really referring to. And I, I think you know what I'm talking about, those of you who've known, me, known us for a while. And by the way, if people come to you when you're processing, it means your soul is in that addiction. If people come to you wanting to help you when you're processing emotionally, then it means that you're in an addiction. Mm. Like, I don't have anybody come to me when I'm processing. Ever. Nobody comes and tries to help me out or... Uh, nobody tries to shut me down or open me up or go there, there, there or <laughs> any of those things. Right? They just let me go ahead. And, and, and also, I don't generally do it in public, as you know. I do it in private. So my suggestion is to try to do the same. There may be things that come up during a week, but you're going to find more that it's more a lot about information that you can take with you and apply in your day-to-day -day life if you want to. Yeah. yeah. And, but notice your attractions as well. You're, you're here with a bunch of other people. Like that's a great way to notice what your resistances and blocks are. If mm. you're attracting certain interactions that are bringing up emotions for you, even if it's your anger and resistance, this is a great time to look at those things as well. Mm. It's like getting a lot of homework that you know you're going to need to look at when you go home. Yeah. And you can enjoy it, right? Yeah. Truth is a wonderful thing. It is. It is. Sets you free, right? It's, it's just such a wonderful thing. What we've got to do is learn how to love it. You know? And once you learn how to love it, you can experience love properly. And, and honestly, you'll never want to give it up after that. After that, you won't ever be stagnant again. Uh, hmm. Joy? Hello. Jesus, I've just been looking at the last line up there. Yep. Because um, I think that I self-reflect, but I wonder whether my arrogance is at a level that actually stops me self-reflecting. Many of you think you're self-reflecting when actually you're reflecting very much in favour of your own addictions and what I would call um, selfishness, you know. So one of the things we want to address is that with you. Uh, on um, Tuesday, I think it is, there's a lovely uh, presentation, because I'm giving it. <laughs> there's a lovely <laughs> presentation about uh, what kind of emotional work you actually need to do in comparison to what you're actually doing. And many of you are actually doing emotional work that's still in a lot of self-deception. Mm -hmm. right? And what we want to do is help you get away out of that, get out of that habit. That ha those habits are addictive and they cause you to actually not work your way through real issues. The session on Tuesday is about forgiveness and repentance, and it's in, in particular about forgiveness and repentance relationships. So what we're going to do is focus on you on what are the relationships where you need to repent for your behaviour, and what are the relationships where you need to forgive the behaviour of others. And many of you are going to get some shocks in those presentations. Mm -hmm. Because many of you have been doing completely the opposite of what a person who's sincere would do. Yeah. So this is why, like we're saying, there's a lot of important information that we want to present to you that, that is going to surprise many of you because you wouldn't have heard it many times before. I've talked about it many times before, unfortunately, but many of you have not heard it. And also, there's some material I'll be presenting to you that, that I presented nine years ago. And very few of you have even seen it. 
because it was presented nine years ago. And it's very, very important for you to understand that material because without understanding it, you won't make much more forward progress. So, so this is, we'll be, we'll be getting material from all over the place of what we feel is missing for most mm -hmm. people. And, uh, and so, yes, I do feel that is an issue for many. You, you believe you are understanding and following the way God's designed for you to get closer to God when the reality is that it's just your understanding, it's not reality. Mm -hmm. And your understanding many times is still focused around your own addictive belief systems and your own unwillingness to actually truly be repentant and truly forgive. So, so these are issues we want to discuss with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so even those many of you who have been associated or have heard Divine Truth for a long time now, you're going to find yourself, um, you, you'll find that you'll have a feeling that there's new information, even though I might have presented it before, but many of you have not understood it. So we're going to present some information in such a way that will hopefully help you understand what's really going on in your relationship and your feelings. And also understand your own soul. You know, I, no, it's not tomorrow, but the next day, we're focusing the whole day on understanding yourself how your soul works and, and those things and many of, there's a lot of information we want to present to you there and many of you have uh, had, had little tidbits of that information presented but not at all very concisely presented and you also haven't had the feelings presented to you, what the feelings feel like when you're in that space and this is something we want to help you identify mm -hmm. for your own sakes, yeah. So there are, there's going to be a lot of information like that, Joy. Um, which will help you get over the, the facade of humility and into real humility. And a facade of humility is just arrogance anyway. It's just a way of thinking you already understand something that you don't understand. And so what we want to do is help you get over that facade of humility and into real humility where you're really connecting with what's going on inside of yourself. Yeah. We did have a, a, a concept of maybe presenting a little bit about spirit influence but actually we feel there's other material so that's more important, so we'll actually be not talking to you about spirit influence at all the entire week unless it's in informal discussions. There is a possibility of informal discussions with you after dinner if Mary, Corny or I feel like we want to. Does that make sense? So what we might do at, say, 5 o'clock, we'll just assess whether we want to, and if we do, we'll just come here for a half an hour, an hour, sit down in front of you, and you can then, uh, and in those place, things, you can ask us anything you want. So and that includes in questions about ourselves, if you want. Right? You can do anything you want in those sessions, just like we're having an after-dinner conversation, but with a few more people than <laughs> five or ten. Right? That's what we're going to do. Yeah. And better lighting. With a bit of better lighting, yeah. <laughs> and a bit better recordings. Um, we, we tried to do this in the States, and unfortunately, um, I, I listened to a lot of the recordings, and they're so bad that we can't even really put them on the internet. They were in the, the dining room, so yeah. there was a lot of clatter, and yeah. And sometimes they were the best discussions because most people were relaxed. So we would encourage you, even in these sessions that we have together, for you to relax to just be yourselves, relax, say what you think, let yourself be confronted when you need to be confronted and so forth. Just, be, just relax with it all. Enjoy, enjoy the process. You know, that's what we do. You know? we, we're nattering at each other all day yeah. about, and enjoying the process, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can enjoy discovery of truth. It doesn't all have to be like, uh, uh, you know, like <laughs> it can be, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> You know? <laughs> so you, many of you have got that feeling, right? <laughs> you know, that, that like grit, <laughs> you know, the, the wide-eyed uh, terror feeling whenever you get presented with truth, right? What we'd like to do is help you get over that this yeah. week. That'd be fantastic, where you, where you actually go, ah, that's fantastic, you know? <laughs> and we, we're going to point out to you some people we know who are in the, in the audiences that actually have that attitude and you'll get to see the feeling they have. When, when they presented with truth, right? So it's wonderful. Thanks. Bye. Hey, Jane, my feeling at the moment is totally opposite to that. I'm sitting here and my stomach's just in cramps and it's just tight and so I've almost got, I've got heartburn happening. 
And I almost feel like vomiting. I yeah, haven't a, experienced You need this a before. coffee and a cake, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Damp it down. <laughs> I don't normally feel like this, so... <laughs> well, you see, uh, this is one thing I'd like to point out to you, perhaps, is that... It's men painful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good, actually. Um, sorry, but it is good. Um, many of you have spent the last five years listening to Divine Truth in addiction. That, that's reality. And the proof of that is that there's been little change in your life or yourself in that time, aside from physical changes that you've forced upon yourself. There's not real, any real change inside of yourself, right? So, so obviously, when you start feeling internally that maybe... And maybe if we could just turn yeah, Mary's just mic down say. a bit, because Mary's mic's ringing. Yeah, that's, um, that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> if you turn Mary's down, that'd be good. Thanks, thanks. Um, the, the real issue is that you have had a lot of fear about addressing your real emotional self. And, and this is the case for many people. And you've been using addictions to avoid the real emotional self. Now, once you get to this point where you start to think about making a different choice, you will find that the very first emotion you'll go through is fear. And fear is going to feel pretty bad. That's the reality. It feels very sickening in your tummy. You, you feel very afraid. And, and you will go through. And it's like a, there's an internal awareness that I'm going to make a change. And I'm... Yeah, She's I, scared. Can I swear? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm so scared that, I, that, I, that I'm ter I have to go to the toilet just because <laughs> I'm so scared, right? Literally. And... And you will find that this is the case when you start getting close to confronting the real emotion. Right? Now, many of you haven't got to that point yet. So you are, many of you are going to go through that point at some point in your future. It's a good place. Because it shows you how much fear has been preventing you from making real progress. So it's a wonderful place. But, but it, does, it does take a bit of time to get used to. Yeah. So for some of you, you will find also that you have spirits around you who have guided you into maintaining your addictions for many years. And, and those spirits are just as scared as you are. Mm -hmm. And they're just as scared to see you change as you are to change. And the reason why is because they get their addictions met through what you do. And if you stop doing what you do, then that means they've got to go and find somebody else who will do it for them. Right? So there's also that pressure that we get upon us as well. So there's a lot of emotional pressures that some of us aren't aware of that are going on, right, that we need to, that we will eventually address. So that, this is just a process. Yeah. And it's great to know that you're up, all churned up inside and it's going to be okay. But one of the things we all need to learn, and this is one thing we're going to discuss with you a lot, is about faith. You know, it's time. It's time that you had faith in God. God's the best person in the universe. It's time you had faith. It's time you had faith in the way God created you. Time you had faith in what God's done for you. Time you had faith in God's love. Time that you had faith that if you follow his way, everything will work out fine. It's time you had faith in all of those things. Right? And what we're hoping to achieve is help you to get to the point where you actually feel some of that faith, actually inside of yourself, rather than just talking about it or hoping that you get it at some point in the future. And fear is the big sign post to say no to faith. Right? So fear has to be dealt with. Mm. And I've said to you so many times before that I had to deal with a lot of fear before I made any progress. And many of you look at me and you go, yeah, but yeah, it's going to be different for me. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. You're going to have a lot of fear to deal with before you're going to make any progress. And male or female makes no difference. doesn't matter how old or young you are. Many of you have got fear even by the time you're 10. So, you know, you're going to have to deal with fear at some point. And what we'll try to do is help you go through the process, like to understand the process and go through it. Is that all right? Good day. Any other questions before we go? Is that a maybe? Uh, let's go to maybe. someone who's sure. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's not a question, but Wi-Fi. Um, Paige and Kerry shared with me that it's available in the public area, and I think it some is. people yes. might be interested in that. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> although, do you need the internet for the next nine days? <laughs> Do you need to actually get onto your Facebook page and check out who's interested in you and what you're doing? Do you... My kids? <laughs> well, do you yeah, need your probably... kids for the next nine days? <laughs> do you need your kids for the next nine days? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I've left Sol at home on his own and I just... How old Sol? Um, 16. Yep. So, just... I and guess the fact I... that you've left him home on your own means he can look after himself, right? Yeah, but I feel this... Um, and he's pretty responsible, isn't he? He is, he's we, great. We all know, oh, like yeah. I know so. Like, yeah, he's great, but yeah. I feel um, this, mm -hmm. that I should be doing that as a parent. Yeah, so I'm you here. feel guilt, so that would be a yep. good motion to deal with. Yep. yep, okay. What else do you feel? That I haven't been such a great mum. Yep, so that's guilt. That's another bit of guilt. What else do you feel? If you don't talk to your child for nine days, how does it feel? Um, Can I be blunt? Yes. You yes. have an emotionally incestuous relationship with your son. Yep, still. Yep. yep. And honestly, nine days without having to talk to you would benefit him greatly. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But that's up to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right. And see, see, many of us are not aware, are we, with our children that, you know, honestly, in the long run, we, you, you might not see, you know, in, in the spirit world, there's people who have never seen their children for 200 years, 500 years. Why is that? Can we know why? <laughs> different desires. If we use some mics, maybe different desires. Teresa. Teresa. Kids just don't want to see their parents. Who's parent? Who's the pen? Who's the, who's the birth, daddy? Yeah, who's the parents, daddy? Yeah. God. Uh, uh, not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not so. What, what's this concept that we still have? My son. Wh whose son? God's son. Who's he, who, is he? Your son? No, he's your brother. He's your brother. He's your, just your little brother, right? Yep. And, and sometimes in someone like cases like Saul, sometimes he knows more about God's truth than you do, so you're his little <laughs> sister from God's perspective. Does that make sense? Right? Now, now, this is what kind of relationship we need to start developing with our children if we're going to get over our addictions. Many of our addictions involve our children. When we go through the relationships section on Tuesday, you'll find that, the, that many of your addictions you have involved your children in. And in fact, for many of you, your children are just there to meet your addictions. And you need to do something about that if you're ever going to be close to God. So I'm not saying don't have a relationship with them. I'm saying that you're going to have to confront all of the error in the relationship that you've created so that you can avoid other relationships. Mm -hmm. So can I ask you what relationship, Nina, you've avoided with having a relationship with your son? My soulmate relationship. Yes, and? My relationship with my father? No, your relationship with God. Oh, okay. Of right? course. Yeah. One of the things that we were going, going, going to go through you is one of the most important things you, you don't understand yet is that almost every relationship you've created in this life has been a relationship so that you could avoid the confrontation that God is having with you with regard to your, your addictions in relationships with God. Did you get what I just said? No. You want to say that again? <laughs> yes. Right. God wants a relationship with you. Your primary relationship will be a relationship with God, but God is not going to feed your addictions. Ever. And you don't like that. So you know what you did? You decided that you weren't going to have a relationship with God because God was naughty and God was not going to feed your addictions. And instead, you were going to have relationships with other people who would feed your addictions. Does he, do you get that? So one of the primary ways you avoid your relationship with God is by having addictive, codependent relationships with other people. Because God does not feed your addictions and you want your addictions met so much that you go, if you, God, I'm not having a relationship with you, I'm going to have a relationship with every other possible person who's going to give me what I want. Right? And this is one of the things we don't understand. 
is that we are actually having relationships with other people and a lot of the times because we want to avoid the relationship with God because when we attempt to have a relationship with God it confronts every emotion within us and we don't like it. We pray for God's love, don't get any. And we go, where do we go? Oh, I'm not getting any from God, so it must be all God's fault, so I'll go and get it from somebody else. And you know, for many of us, our children have been the persons that we've primarily got the emotions from that we couldn't get from somebody else. And that's very sad, in fact. And that's one of the things we're going to go through on Tuesday. So I'm just giving you a little taste there of some of the things that we're going to be confronted with. <laughs> so my suggestion is think about everything you do this week. You've got an opportunity to be com contemplative. contemplative, haven't you, this week. You haven't got all of these external pressures all of your external pressures of work and other relationships and all these other things, having to shop. You don't even have to cook for yourself. No, isn't that <laughs> fantastic? And so you have an opportunity to use all that time to actually be contemplative, to, to look at yourself. So my suggestion is to have a look at everything that you feel drawn into doing. And if that's talking to your kids and what, all, all the other things that you're drawn into doing, Feel about them and think, okay, let's, let's look at this from God's perspective for a change. That's what we're going to encourage you to do. And we're going to help, try to help you see God's perspective by our discussions. Does that make sense? So it should be fun, huh? No worries. Well, I think we've said enough tonight and, and, and we, we look forward to this interaction with you. So we're, we're hoping we can enjoy this interaction with you, have fun with it, and also help each other learn a lot in the process. And we hope that uh, in the end that you do actually learn a lot. But, but a lot of that will depend upon... Yeah, you. It will depend upon you. Yeah. Uh, you know... The reality is we can talk and talk and talk and you know I can talk, right? <laughs> we can talk and talk and talk and, and, yet, and yet it can all just go, can't it? In one ear and out the other. And for a lot of us it doesn't even go in one ear, <laughs> let alone out the other. You know? And that's because we are so blocked to receiving truth. So we need to confront some of these things. So that's what we'll try to do this week. So in closing, what I'd like to do is encourage you, for those of you who'd like to uh, keen on having a personal truth session, remember they're 25 minutes long. You, we'll, I'll give you probably three to five minutes to explain why you wanted to have it, and then the 20 minutes will be me trying to give you very direct answers to, the, to whatever the issues are that, uh, that are raised. And um, if you want one with Mary or Corny, they're happy to do them, but they're going to be selective. With, with Rose, with me, I'll accept almost anything. <laughs> now, now the, the other reason thing. I should say the reason we would be selective is only because we only want to give you feedback in areas where we feel confident, yeah. where we feel that we'll be coming from a space that's clear. We don't, you know, if we both recognise we're still working through a lot more than Jesus is, and so if we feel like we can't be clear with you on your issue, we'll defer to him. Yeah. And because there's only, I think there's only 12 of them. Uh, yep. I think there's only 12. So, you know, there's 70 people here. 12 means that you, you've got a limited opportunity. So my suggestion is to think about it quickly. <laughs> and, uh, and just be aware, though, that they are going to be televised and they are going to be on the internet. Yeah. Right, so if you're not comfortable with that, don't do it. Yep, Rachel? Rachel. We have the mic over there. Can you put your name down and then discover your question? I mean, I've... Yeah, so, yeah. if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll probably want to see your question We would do want to see your question. we say yay or nay kind yeah. of thing. Right. Yeah. So if other people have already got one, then we'll be going there. Yeah. But be aware that in some sessions I might be five minutes and I'll say that's all I need to say. Mm. So we might be able to put 
you know, two or three of them in a row. So, um, so yeah, it's like sometimes you're going to find it very hard if you do it, but sometimes you're going to find it, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, I'll have to go away and think about that, which is what I'd encourage you to do. Yeah. See? Uh, I want to know that when are we going to hand out the note to who? The note? No, you, uh, to register. Just on the clipboards at the back. There's a clipboard there's at a, the back. There's two clipboards, mm -hmm. and on it there's a space. You'll see the sheets, and it says registration for personal truth session, and there's a space for your name and space to write the issue that you want to discuss. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, and the issue won't be private. But yeah, I remember you said you're not interested in stories, only questions. Uh, no, I don't mind a story, but you you've only got five minutes to tell it. So you have to. So you have to be concise. Condense the story. Does that yeah. make sense? Can I raise a question to you? I want to marry. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we have a choice whether we can whether we answer it or not. So what we do, what we will do, is we will make a selection afterwards, and we'll go. Well, yeah, I think this really fits in well with that day. So we might put that question on that day, and so forth. There are certain material that we'll have covered that day and the questions might fit in well with those particular things we cover on a certain day. So we, we will mix and match those days as best we're able. And we have to do it before tomorrow morning? Um, no, you can no. do it any time over the week, but, but just the longer you leave it, obviously, the less chance there will be that you'll, that you'll have the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. But and by the way, it doesn't mean that if it's not going to be first come, first serve. So, so we're going to select... Well, we feel that that's a really good question and we'll, we'll, we want to sit down with that person. And so, yeah, so it doesn't mean that... It means that for some of you, you might ask a question and not, and not have it answered this particular session. Mm. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So you ready for bed? Yep. Yeah? It's cold, <laughs> it's yeah, cold it's cold. now, isn't it? It's, yep. Yeah, look at you, man. <laughs> 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 it's the thongs. <laughs> it's the thongs, man. My little toes are cold in, in the boots. <laughs> Wayne comes around my place. He brings sometimes some things that I've asked him to make around to my place. And, he, and he's wearing a pair of shorts, T-shirt, <laughs> and I'm wearing like a tracking suit or whatever. <laughs> and look at him and go, what's going on with you? <laughs> it's pretty cold. Yeah. yeah, you'll find it is a bit... It will be a bit cold during the day after a few hours too. So you just... If you come prepared to just put a few layers on, and if you've got some long johns or something like that, you might need them <laughs> for the legs and, and so forth. And if you've got a bit of a beanie, you <laughs> beanie. might find that's handy. <laughs> the guys in Cobra all seem to be well prepared. <laughs> that's because it, it's nuts where you it's, live. <laughs> now it's, it's warm here right now for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it? How warm it is. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and I think it was minus 10 there the other day, wasn't it? And... Um, yeah, so, and at least we're not sitting in, uh, uh, like, Sweden in the middle of winter in a wool shed. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cold when we were there, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, but it will be a bit uncomfortable at times. What we're going to do, because the, the heaters make a fair bit of ra racket, we're going to sort of put them on for an hour here, an hour there at the beginnings and try to warm up the place a bit. But it will cool down over time and then every time... Oh, one thing we have to mention. Every hour we will have a break for five minutes. I did say that. Oh, you did say that? Yep. Okay, I wasn't here. Yep. And, uh, and that's probably because I was in the toilet at the time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and it's for going to the toilet and so that you can drink a lot of water. So, so that hopefully will encourage you to just drink a lot of water and not have to hold on to your bladder for long periods of time. Yeah. Good day. Well... Have um, a good rest, everyone. You've had your supper. Yeah. <laughs> so do whatever you like now. <laughs> Come you. prepared for tomorrow. Thanks, guys.